and welcome again to Creative Connections. I'm Gary Blanchard, and today my guest is Mark Abair from the Hearing Room in Lowell, Massachusetts. Mark, welcome. Oh, thank you so much, Gary. I appreciate so, it. So, how did the Hearing Room get started? Well, so the, so the Hearing Room came uh, from an idea from my, my girlfriend, who's an educator and a nurse, and uh, she's also what I call a certified creative person. And she always wanted to have a an art center that was accessible to everyone and it was open a lot because a lot of the art centers she knew you know would only be open if they were having a painting night or things like that so she developed this idea that she wanted to have a, a place that would be open uh, for all forms of creative expression and two and a half years ago you know she pitched the idea to me this is what she wanted to do and uh, I was pretty nervous about it at first, but she had a vision, you know, of what she wanted, and you know, we're, we're developing it still. Okay. So, how did you figure out the location? Well, uh, so scouting locations. Originally, we had, in the beginning, we had the idea of where we wanted to be. You know, um, we like we both like the town of Maynard, and Maynard's kind of an art, a very artsy type of place. And we started looking around there, and we looked at like an old church down there. Uh, and it just looking at a lot of different places, we use the internet a lot. So we'd, we'd find out from someone that says, hey, you know, over in, you know, Groton, there's an old nursery that, that closed down, the building's available, or there's an old, uh, you know, whatever building. But as the hearing room turned out is, at the time, Kaylin was doing cre um, community nursing. And she was driving to a patient's apartment uh, to do home, you know, home health, whatever. Yeah. Uh, and she passed this place on Chelmsford Street in Lowell that was available for rent. It had a restaurant to this side of it. It was on the main drag. And she thought, wow, you know, this is kind of a cool little place. And she used to, years ago, live around the corner uh, in Lowell at the time. And she was familiar with the neighborhood. So she approached the, uh, the person that had it for rent. And, you know, the rest is how we ended up there. OK. So it, it seems to me, and I'm not familiar with Lowell, but it mm -hmm. does seem to me like it's a very good location. Yeah, so we have a lot of things that we can offer that some of the other locations in Lowell can offer. The number one thing that we have is we have free parking on both sides of the street. And a lot of downtown Lowell, which is right over the bridge from us, there is very limited parking. There's meters. Uh, you, you can go to the one in municipal garages and then walk a few blocks. Um, but we're right on the main drag. Um, we offer free parking, and it's it's just it's very accessible. And then we have the train, um, not even a two minute walk from us. So you know people even from Boston will come out um, and and take the train to and from to be able to get down to see us. Okay. So uh, it, it sounds like opening it was a real leap of faith. It definitely was. Um, scary. <laughs> and at, how, how has it grown? Well, so uh, it's, it's, a, uh, it's a work in progress. I mean, we, we look at it as a project. And we're constantly working on improving what we're doing. Uh, by adding different events. I mean, when, when we started, uh, Kaylin, like I said, was doing community nursing. She stopped doing nursing, and she devoted it full time to the hearing room. She was there from 10 in the morning till 10 at night to be open. And she would just have a big chalkboard outside. We didn't, we didn't have a stage. We didn't have anything. And she would put a big chalkboard out there that says, come play music now, or something like uh, of that. And Slowly but surely, you know, people got to see that we were there, and then uh, we've gone ahead. We we built a stage early on uh, to be able to do musical events because both her and I are musicians, so we have a lot of musical connections. So we thought it was kind of easy to to get into the music end of things. Um, she's also a, a writer, a songwriter, poet, uh, essayist. So. She wanted to be able to encompass that. And we just have continued to add all these different events over the last two and a half years. And as of two months ago, we are now open seven days a week. Oh, wow. <laughs> Which I don't, think, I don't think you were aware of that. No, I, I um, didn't realize you've, you've gone to seven days. Yeah. So I, I, I know the hearing room largely as a music venue. 
What else do you do there? So we, we try to have uh, propagation of art in all its forms. So a lot of what we have on the walls, we have local artists displaying their, their artwork. We have author events, so in literary, uh, literary events. We have um, playwrights come in. Uh, we do workshops. Uh, we do demonstrations. Um, like, and for Thursday nights, we do, of course, we do a music jam. I mean, we, we really try to just take anything uh, that's creative and give it an outlet, which is which is our venue. Okay, as I recall, at one time you had a movie filming there. Uh, it, it, indeed, so uh, we we still do uh, movie night. We had um, a short film last February film there um, by a, a local filmmaker. Uh, which was kind of fun. It's my only movie credit that I have on IMDb uh, right. as a sound guy. Uh, and it was a four-minute film uh, filmed in the hearing room uh, with some just fantastic camera people and whatnot. And that has morphed into, instead of just trying to film movies there, but actually showcase and give independent filmmakers a, an outlet. So, for example, uh, the week before uh, Halloween, last Wednesday night, we showed uh, 12 short horror films, all made by local independent filmmakers. You know, that's wonderful. It, I think that the arts, uh, like anything else, there are the professional artists, and they get a lot of attention, and they have a lot of opportunities. Sure. But then there are the more independent people who are perhaps up and coming, and sometimes they don't have a place to showcase. That, that's absolutely true, and that, and that applies also to musicians, uh, to, to poets. I mean, one of the things that I always thought um, that the hearing room was really specially geared to is you've got somebody maybe 17 years old and he's up, up in his apartment, whatever, writing a song, but He's got no outlet for it. You know, she can't go to the bar because she's not old enough, and there's no venue. We're we're a listening room. You know, where the performer is the attraction, not a sideshow. You don't have, uh, you know, the, we don't have any televisions in there. There's no <laughs> keynote, so there's no sports going on. And uh, really, it's very uh, it's a very intimate. Uh, connection between the performer and no matter what what their medium is and the audience and vice versa and and I think that's one thing that I for one really appreciate about the hearing room because it is one of the few places I have gone where I have felt that people have come to listen mm -hmm. uh, we have a, a workshop 13 is an art center here in where uh, and they are mostly visual arts, but they do some performing arts things, and they have a monthly open mic. Okay. And it's like with the hearing room, people come to listen, not to have it be a background for conversations. Right. right. How were you able to maintain that? Because people do love to talk. Well, so they do, but <laughs> you know, because we really cater to a niche audience. So we have a, uh, we have a more narrow appeal to people. We really attract like-minded people, you know, uh, <laughs> people that really want, want to be there, want to listen, want to be able to, you know, uh, embrace uh, original creations and, and to try to understand and, and also connect with the artist to be able to, um, you know, uh, get their, uh, you know, their thought process as far as, well, you know, uh, how, how did you write that passage? You know, what was, what was that? And it, it really gives a, a very, like I said before, a very intimate relationship between performers and, and for the uh, community that we're, we've put together. Yeah, and, you know, the, the one thing that I really feel there is the sense of community. Uh, now, if I'm not mistaken, at one point you became a co-op. Is that correct? So that's that's right. We 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 worked on the in the co-op model, and we were having uh, about nine other um, local artists and like-minded creative people like us. Um, we're going ahead and paying in uh, and sharing a lot of the responsibilities, and then you know running events and whatnot. Uh, we are currently in the process of working towards a, a nonprofit 501c3. 
Uh, we think that that's the direction that, that we'd like to go. Uh, we're in the midst of trying to get all that done. There's, there's all kinds of things that you have to do to make that happen. Um, but that's kind of the next logical step for us uh, to be okay. able to do that. And, and you have been doing some fundraising. That is correct. We're, we're constantly fundraising. <laughs> <laughs> so what are some of the fundraising things that you've done? And what's been helpful and what kind of what that maybe didn't work as well as you thought? It's, it, it, you know, I mean, you, you throw enough things at, a, at the wall, something will finally <laughs> stick. Okay. Um, Fundraising is, is a lot of what we do because we are funded entirely by donations at this point. Uh, we don't have um, a, 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 we don't have a budget. We don't have you know millions of dollars at our disposal. So we've been working fundraisers. Like we have a particular project in mind, and one of the last ones we did ended uh, just two weeks ago, where we wanted to be able to upgrade our lighting, uh, upgrade our sound system. Uh, and then some incidentals that we would need to be able to uh, give an enhanced performance and experience to both the performers and to the audience. And um, we, we did it through a GoFundMe campaign in conjunction with a, a very large songwriters showcase, we'd like to say, um, th which you know, culminated in, in the final show of 23 different performers coming two Sundays ago and uh, singing, singing a song each. And everybody that has crossed paths with the hearing room, and yourself included, uh, has just been very supportive of what we do and, and very generous, too, as far as you know, their time with their financial you know, givings and whatnot. Um, that we're constantly, constantly working. At, I, but I don't want to be always asking for you right, know, money, right. You know, I mean, that's no, tough. No, and, and it's very awkward, but unfortunately, money is a very necessary thing. That is correct. Uh, one of my favorite fundraisers you did was the t shirt. Oh, okay, yeah. yeah. And I've still got my hearing oh, room right. t shirt at home. Uh, but, you know, what I like about your fundraisers is that they are very grassroots. Right. And, you know, sometimes you get. And, you know, I, I am a self-confessed NPR junkie, mm -hmm. but uh, sometimes, you know, they, they kind of lean heavily on the larger amounts that you could donate. Sure, right, right. Uh, and I've always felt like with the hearing room, all of your fundraisers, if I kick in $20, it's greatly appreciated. Without a doubt. And there's no, oh. Is that all you have? Uh, we, we certainly <laughs> never, never approach anything like that. Because we, the hearing room is, is supposed to be accessible to everyone. All our events run through a suggested donation of X amount of dollars. And that runs anywhere from 5 to $12 uh, most of the time in, in that range. But if someone was to come to the hearing room and they didn't have the five dollars, we're not turning them away either. You know, I mean, it, that's why it's a suggested donation. One of the underlying fundraisers that we have, and it's it's a constant ongoing thing, uh, but it's not heavily promoted as a fundraiser, is we're trying to sell memberships uh, to the hearing room at a hundred dollars a year, and out of that hundred dollars, you get a free T-shirt. Uh, which is different than the one that you have. Um, but it also comes with some other perks and benefits, like you get $5 off admission to any one of the events. You get exclusive content uh, to the newsletter. I've worked a deal out with a local music shop. They give you a little bit of a discount if you show your card. But the number one thing that I always put on the flyer, it's on our website, our Facebook page, the number one benefit of becoming a member of the hearing room is the hearing room exists. You're supporting it. You know, I'm not, I'm not selling a, um, a set of, you know, a coffee mug for, you know, $150, <laughs> you know, uh, type thing. You know, whatever. The membership is a little bit different because we, we, we put it down to $100 a year figuring we run so many events and if we offer this discount, the inaugural people got in and they actually got a year full of no cost. Uh, we've had to change that a little bit because yeah. if all of a sudden, you know, we, we have a show and all members show up, <laughs> right. then the performer doesn't have anything because all the performers, they need to get compensated for what they do. It, it was very difficult in the beginning in the first few months when we started having uh, musical events was to say, can you come down and, we, I mean, we couldn't even give gas money at that, that point there. 
Um, and we're to the point now, I mean, if, if the money's not in the till, it, it, comes, it comes right out of our pockets. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, Kalen digs deep uh, to, to take care of that because it's important for us to make sure that it, people at least compensated in somewhat. Uh, and that, that's where it comes into the, the slight difficulty of audience, you know, and getting yeah. the audiences in there because we have such fantastic shows and, and I'm, I'm not saying that as a, um, as a buildup of anything. We have some of the best people come through our little venue and they put on a, a heart and soul performance. And it's heartbreaking when, you know, there's three people there or six people there, you know. Right, right. You know, and that, that is sometimes a problem with a, a smaller place. Sure. Uh, it takes time to really build an audience. But I appreciate that you bring in people who are not necessarily big name performers but are highly talented mm -hmm. performers. Without a doubt. And, you know, people can come in and for a small amount of money see amazing music. Without a doubt. And, and you know, that's, that's really a, a meaningful full thing. So uh, how, how much are the, the visual arts a part of the hearing room now? Uh, so, I mean, all art and all, all its different forms. So we've tried to have a lot of different, you know, um, dancers come in. You know, and we haven't had a huge success with the visual arts. But once a month on the third Saturday, we have performance lab, which is all. Uh, what this last one we did was percussion and poetry with movement. We did that, um, and that event happens every month. So we'll at least have some kind of visual arts, and it could be a, um, it could be just a, a, a visual, um, uh, electronic performance as well as uh, you know an in, in-person in type. Okay. Thing. Yeah. 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 Uh, I, at one time, I I think you were had you know like a live model. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, we we had uh, yeah we were doing live figure drawing for for a little while. We had a. We had this 26-year-old artist uh, from Westford, Mass, who happened to find us one day, and she just really dug the place. And you know, off to the races, she wanted to do start doing, you know, uh, live figure drawing, and it did very well with that. And uh, I think it turned out to be very good. She was getting about uh, maybe 11 people a week on a Wednesday night to come, that's, to, to come that's down yeah. and to do the drawing and stuff. And she was really working at get that. And unfortunately for, for us, and you know, fortunately for her, um, she had a, a, a change of things going on in her personal life and you know, she, she moved away. Okay. You know, and that's how that ended up going going away for us. And the, the need still exists to have some form of that. Um, but we have so many different regular events now, finding holes in the calendar, which still gives us the days which we're trying to fill. But then again, if you do some kind of a event during the day, you have to expect your audience is a much smaller sure, sure. crowd. Yeah. Uh, so how, th this is probably going to be a tough question, but <laughs> what do you think the hearing room has added to the town of Lowell? Well, well, that is a that 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 that's kind of a deep question. Yeah. Um, certainly, what w we have tried to do is to introduce a new part of the community, the community of artists and like-minded people that we have, and integrate that into the fabric of Lowell to give a venue of creative expression with no you know, with no restrictions, uh, where everyone is, is welcome to come in, everyone uh, is um, uh, encouraged, and there's, you know, it's judgment free, you know, it, it, it's a very, it's a very positive place. Uh, and I, I like to think that, that that's, you know, we're, we're working to that, you know, there's so much more to go with what, what we have to offer. Um, and it's just a little bit different. I mean, there's nothing like our place in Lowell. There, there really isn't. Well, you know, there, there's nothing like your place in a lot of places, yeah. quite honestly. <laughs> and, you know, I remember the first time I went to the hearing room thinking how much I had that 
it brought back memories of the 60s going into mm. the the coffee houses that were around uh, because it's funky in a very good way <laughs> and laid back uh, and you know there's not all these matching tables that look like they came from Ikea. Yeah, right. <laughs> you know, I not, don't think there's anything Not that, that there's anything wrong with Ikea, <laughs> but, uh, but it, it just, it felt so home-like. Oh, nice, yeah. Uh, and interestingly, a, a friend of mine who ran a coffee house in Baltimore happened to be in town, uh, in Lowell that time, the first time I performed there. I recall. And, and he came in and there was, you know, he, he also picked up on mm. that, nice. that whole thing. So it was, you know, like a, a, a wonderful call back to an old time. Uh, so when, where do you see the, the hearing room going from here? Well, uh, certainly we're constantly every day working towards a, getting the hearing room to be self-sustaining. You know, it, it, it's very difficult to always be reaching in your pockets to cover the shortfall. We want that to be able to keep going. And we, we want the hearing room to be able to breathe on its own. We want more people to be involved with people that have all kinds of ideas that want to do things and, you know, and just offer it and then just grow into whatever it, it could turn into, but, but live and breathe uh, w without a lot of the CPR that we have to currently do for it, you know, <laughs> just to keep the pulse on it. And I, and I don't mean that in a, in a negative way. Uh, it is a labor of love. You, you can't do what we do if you don't love what you do at it. Uh, and it, it's, it's very important uh, to both Kayla and myself and to, to just to all the people that are involved for it to uh, exist. And whenever there's, you know, whenever there's some kind of a, uh, like a bump in the road, it's, it's amazing to see the amount of people that, you know, come through and they have an idea of how, hey, you know what, why don't we look at it this way? And, it, you know, and, and it just, I want it to be a, a, a creative hub. Yeah. So it, it sounds like, like the two of you uh, invest a lot more in it than perhaps you'd, you'd like to at the moment. Well, it's not necessarily, you know, I mean, it, it takes a lot. Yeah. To, you, you have to give a lot to get a lot. Right. And, you know, eventually... Uh, there'll be the throngs of people involved where we may be able to step back a little bit, where, whereas we're, you know, I mean, we're, we both have full-time jobs still. Um, she's teaching up in Merrimack, New Hampshire, and I'm down in Clinton, Mass. So we're each, uh, you know, let's just say an, an hour away from Lowell. So it's, it's get out of work, you know, get home, you got to eat real quick, we got to hit the gym, and then, you know, shower change up to the HR, and then we get out of the HR at 11 o'clock or something like that <laughs> every night. And, right. you know, it, it, I won't, I don't, I'm not saying it's a chore, uh, because no, it but, isn't, you know. Uh, but there are, there are those days when it's like, you know, like a little bit of, you know, I don't have to rush, you know. Right, G sure. Give me 20 minutes. <laughs> yeah. But then on the other hand, there are a lot of people who are pitching in. Too. Without a doubt. You know, we have a, we have a, a great, great core bunch of people uh, that come up and just run events and are very supportive in, in all different ways. So we have a great support system. A lot of it does, you know, fall on to, to Kaylin, you know, especially. Um, but this is her, you know, it was her idea that she's just trying to, you know, massage out and, and get it out there, you know, and then just kind of step back. I mean, what, what she likes to call herself is the janitor, you know. She's like, <laughs> I, you know, I, I, that's all I am, you know. And she doesn't want to have to worry about this. She wants all these other people to be involved and, and just to have a, just grow a big, big community of creative folk. Yeah. You know, and I, I think to me one of the big messages of the hearing room is it, it's almost like Field of Dreams. Build it and they will come. <laughs> And to, for Kaylin and for you to have had that willpower to say, this is going to be tough, it's going to be work, but we want to see this, and if we don't do it, who will? Right, right. And, you know, you have taken that dream and you have now turned it into a reality. 
<laughs> and and I really commend you guys for oh. that because uh, I feel that places like the hearing room, like Workshop 13 here and where, Hi. fill a real need, mm -hmm. and uh, it it needs to be met. And I'm glad that you guys are doing that. Oh, thank you. Yeah. Uh, now, on a personal level, you are also a banjo player. I, that, that's true. I, I do play banjo in a, in a local band. And, okay, uh, what's the band? Uh, my band's name is Cross Tracks, and uh, we play all through Worcester County, Merrimack Valley, pretty much uh, anywhere okay. uh, that'll go ahead and pay us. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and uh, so that, that also is a, another, another thing that takes up you know, some of my time is to play because I, I keep the band pretty busy. Okay, yeah. and, and Kaylin is also a uh, Musician and writer. Uh, that's that's true. So so her her current band is on uh, is on hiatus right now. Uh, but she is definitely still songwriting. She was working on a song tonight before I got ready to come down here, and uh, that was inspiring to me to to, to write the uh, write the poem on the uh, on the ride down here that I'm working on and. Uh, uh, I've broken into the foray of songwriting, which is something that I've never done. Okay. Um, and uh, I've, I've written two melodies, but I've also written one song. And I've, I've actually been going around to open mics and playing guitar, which I just started playing uh, earlier this year. I, I bought a $75 guitar from a friend of mine. All and, right. Uh, I've been to, I think, six open mics already, uh, doing a little bit of performing and whatnot. That's, that's great. Yeah. That's great. Now, is there a question that I did not ask that you wish I would have asked? Um, well, I, I don't know. That's a, that, that, that is a good question in, <laughs> in, in, in itself. I, I stole that from Dan Rather. Oh. <laughs> uh, no, I, I just, um, I, I just got to say, I mean, I, I've been appreciative of, of your support uh, since we first met. Um, and you've, you've performed twice up, up at the hearing room, and I believe you're the feature coming up on the 2nd of December yes. at the open mic. And uh, I'm looking forward to that. I'm just throwing that out there to, <laughs> to, to everybody. But uh, as far as having a, uh, having a question, no, I'm, I'm, just, uh, I'm just very appreciative of, of, of all your support, Gary. You, you know, you've been very good to us. And, and I appreciate your coming down from Lowell to join us here in Ware. And uh, I want to thank the audience for tuning in. And uh, please take that trip to Lowell, uh, listen to some good music, and support people who are really caring about the arts. Thank you for tuning in, and we'll see you again next time on Creative Connections.